Good morning, my name is Mindy and welcome to Unity North Tampa. Thank you for joining us today. Mary and Liz Dalla has a musical prayer for us.
as we bring the truth of that song into our heart, we remember that we are all children of God, made in God's likeness. Therefore, we are spiritual beings, and we have all the attributes of God. And today, we claim that most important attribute, the power of love, divine love that heals all wounds, that brings us together in harmony, healing differences, that awakens us to our truth as spiritual beings and our oneness with one another. And today we affirm that awakening happening in everyone, everywhere, that we may have peace and harmony and abundance in our world. And so it is. Thank you. And thank you again for joining us today. Please join me in declaring our opening affirmation. There is only one, one presence and one, one power in my life and, and in the universe. universe. God, the good, omnipotence. The daily word is a sacred devotion that inspires us to express our spiritual nature. We ask that you center within and listen deeply as we share today's message. I give thanks for all expressions of fatherly love. My relationship with my father may have been positive or, and nurturing or difficult and challenging. He may have been a strong presence during my childhood or he may have been absent. We may be part of each other's lives today. We may be estranged or he may have passed from earthly life. Whatever our circumstances, I bless my father and I see him enfolded in divine love. As I honor my father, I also honor all the father figures who have helped guide me along my path. Family members, teachers, neighbors, clergy, employers, and friends. I bless them as I recall all the ways each one in a unique way has molded strength, guidance, wisdom, and patience. Their presence remains with me thanks to their gifts of fatherly love. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. Proverbs 4, 11. Thank you. Buenos días. Buenos días. Domingo 21 de junio de 2020. Bendición para los padres. Doy gracias por todas las expresiones de amor paternal. Mi relación con mi padre puede haber sido positiva y sustentadora o difícil y retadora. Tal vez él haya sido una presencia constante durante mi infancia o haya estado ausente. Puede que todavía compartamos esta experiencia de vida o no mantengamos contacto alguno. Sin importar las circunstancias, bendigo a mi Padre y lo veo rodeado de mi amor divino. Lo honro y también honro a quienes me han guiado a lo largo del camino. Familiares, maestros, vecinos y amigos. Los bendigo a todos recordando las maneras como me enseñaron a demostrar fortaleza, sabiduría y paciencia. La presencia de quienes me han brindado su ayuda permanecerá conmigo siempre. Siento gratitud por el regalo del amor paterno. Yo te muestro el camino de la sabiduría y te llevo por senderos de rectitud. Proverbios 4, 11. Gracias. And let us prepare for meditation with the song Speak Only Love.
Please join me in this time of meditation. And we begin by relaxing. If you are sitting in a chair or on the floor, please relax, allowing the chair to support the weight of your body. And we also relax further by relaxing our shoulders and the tiny muscles around our eyes and our jaw muscles. And just imagine a feeling of relaxation and peace flowing over you. As you set aside any concerns that you might have, as we go into a time of aligning with that peace of God within us. So I invite you now, if it's comfortable for you, to close your outer eyes, bringing your attention inward to your heart. And we relax even more with conscious deep breathing. And so we begin with a full exhale. Exhaling fully and completely, letting go of any stale air, just letting go of a full breath. And then breathing in deeply, breathe down into the belly and into the chest. Filling yourself with that breath of life. And then exhale again, gently and fully, releasing and letting go. Breathing in again deeply, we feel the belly and the chest with that Spirit of God. And then we exhale again, fully and completely. One more time, we breathe in deeply, opening to the breath and opening to Spirit. And this time as we exhale, we exhale with a gentle sigh. <sighs> Just feel that release. And now allow the breath to find a natural rhythm. Continuing to hold your attention inward. Notice the movement of the breath as you breathe. The feeling of the breath coming in and going out. Notice the parts of the body that move as you breathe. Focusing on the breath, we let go of all else especially any concerns that we might fully experience our oneness. Centered within, we remember that we are not our body. even though we use our breath to center us, we also know that we are not our thoughts. We are not our emotions. And so if we are not the body, the thoughts are the emotions, what are we? We are that name of God mentioned in the song. We are the I am. Spirit and expression here and now. All of us, children of the one creator, the one cosmic universal parent, We are one with our source, and we are one with one another. As we center within and let go of the busy thoughts of the day, and 
focus our attention on that truth. I am a child of God. I am made in the likeness of the divine. I am much more than this human experience. Respiramos profundamente de nuevo. We breathe in again deeply. Breathing in that knowing. Remembering who we truly are. Spiritual beings with spiritual abilities to deal with whatever circumstance arises knowing that the divine within us is greater than any challenge, any circumstance of this life. And in knowing that truth, we are empowered to live from our highest, empowered to express love and wisdom. Of abundance and 
and joy. And we claim these gifts already done in spirit, being called forth now, collectively in love, and in Christ's name. And so it is. Amen. And we take a moment now to pray with those we would like to bless with our loving thoughts. So I invite you to call to mind loved ones, friends, anyone you would like to bless. And as you think of them, do not think of their weaknesses or challenges, but see them strong, whole, and well, shining with light and love. See their truth as you speak or think their names right now in the silence. So as we speak these names, we are at peace, knowing that their well-being is assured in spirit. And we affirm with each one that they are manifesting their highest good now. We continue to hold that vision with them, supporting them in expressing their full spiritual potential as we strive to also express our full spiritual potential in intention and potential every day and we claim that good together and so it is please join us in affirming together as jesus taught us to pray our lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors and leave us not in temptation but deliver us from error for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen Truth, truth, I speak only truth. Truth, truth, I speak only truth. From the morning's first light to the last dawn at night, let my words speak only truth.
occurrences, all of the tremendous change that we are going through in our world right now. We know that our fathers and those who are fathering have to step up in their leadership, in their role, because of all the challenges. They are meeting so many changes too. There's many fathers have lost their jobs because of the pandemic. Many families are grieving over loved ones that have made their transition. And there's always that confusion and uncertainty about what might happen next. And also the upheaval over the ongoing violence that is racially based. So many very important issues, so many huge changes are going on in our world and in our families. So our fathers are very challenged and it's not just the fathers, it's also the mothers and the grandparents and siblings, all of us are probably having difficulty with the changes that we're going through during this pandemic. So I want to share a, a story with you that I read about that uh, made me smile, but it also has a lot of import. It has a lot of symbolism for where we are now in our current situation. So imagine, if you will, uh, some British golfers who were living in India, probably in colonial India, and they decided to build a golf course. Well, the golf course was beautiful and they were so excited about being able to play golf on this course. What they didn't expect was that there was another uh, thing that was gonna happen that was very surprising to them as they started to play golf. So as they would hit the ball, the monkeys would come out of the jungle, grab the balls and start throwing them around in all directions. And so of course this was very disturbing. Here they were excited about playing golf and the monkeys were ruining everything. So they said, okay, what can we do about this? Let's build a fence. So they built a big fence around the whole golf course, which must have been quite an undertaking and quite expensive. And you know what, monkeys climb really well. So the fence was absolutely no barrier to the monkeys. So they kept coming in, grabbing the golf balls and throwing them all over the place. And so they thought, well, what do monkeys like? They like bananas, they like fruit. Maybe we'll give them some fruit to distract them. So they started giving them bananas and other fruit. And so that didn't work either because then all the monkeys were attracted by the fruit and it just brought more monkeys and more monkeys were grabbing golf balls and throwing them all over the place. And so then they decided, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? The fence didn't work, the fruit didn't work. So let's trap the monkeys and we'll relocate them out in the jungle. So they spent all this time getting all of these traps and they started trapping the monkeys when they came to the golf course and they hauled them off to the jungle and you know what happened, they just came right back. And so they were still out there throwing the balls around. And so the golfers got together and they decided, well, none of this is working. So we need to have a new rule. So the new rule is, wherever the monkey drops the ball, we'll just play it from there. <laughs> So I guess you could call this monkey golf. And maybe that's the way you feel right now. It's so crazy. Monkeys are throwing balls all over the place, right? When we think we've got a handle on something, something else changes, something else comes up. Well, this story is a, a metaphor for us because the golfers were trying to control the behavior of the monkeys. And as I explained, they went to great lengths to do all of these things everything they could physically and humanly to keep the monkeys out of the game and it just didn't work. The monkeys were there and they were gonna be a part of the game. And so that's the kind of change, but in a much more serious way, of course, that we are dealing with now. But just like the golfers, they found that they couldn't control the behavior of the monkeys no matter what they did. So instead, they made a decision to make a change and make an adjustment to the change they were experiencing, the unexpected change, just like the unexpected changes that we are going through. So what do we do when this change comes into our lives and it's so extreme and it's so unexpected and it can feel overwhelming? And especially right now, because we're all experiencing multiple changes changes in jobs, changes in the family, changes in work habits, changes in economy and money, changes in loved ones not being with us anymore, uh, not being able to visit
visit loved ones in nursing homes and so forth. So many unexpected challenges, so many shifts in our culture that are happening now. And so as I've said before, we are going through that breakdown for the breakthrough. We're going through tremendous change, moving toward a greater reality in the future. But we have this change to go through now, and we have to deal with it in some way. What new rules do we need to make to help us be strong and be calm and centered no matter what changes are going on in our life? And of course, it reminded me of the serenity prayer. And I'd like to share that with you. I know anyone in recovery knows this prayer. Dear God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And so today I want to point out to you another thing about this prayer. This is the prayer that we have prayed uh, from our, our relationship with God that we've had in the past, that we grew up praying to God to grant us our wishes, to change the things that we wanted to see changed. But we are growing up spiritually, and we are learning, too, that prayer is not about changing God's mind to help us, but of the knowing that prayer changes our consciousness so that we are in alignment with God, with our heavenly parent, with our source, our creator. So knowing that we have this ability to consciously align with God, as Jesus taught us, God, the heavenly perfect Father, already knows what you need and what you want. So why do we pray? We pray to get ourselves in alignment with that with which we want. When we pray that prayer of serenity, let us know who we are. We are a child of God, each of us. Each of us is one with the source. And where we get into trouble is when we believe we're separate from God or that God doesn't love us or that we're not worthy of being blessed. We're not worthy of being healthy or wealthy or happy. And so as children of God, we have forgotten who we are, what great and wonderful spiritual attributes. And so if God is the father, mother, if you want to, the divine cosmic parent, scripture tells us that we are made in that same likeness. And so in life, when we are in need and we are afraid and we are stressed and we are fearful, when we are ill, when we are sad, we are confused and in doubt, we look for something outside of us. And unity teaches us that we don't need to look outside of us. Everything that we need is already inside of us. And so, as a, a unity minister said, it's a shame that we are looking outside for what we need and want, but it's already here inside of us. And so when we pray the serenity prayer, we can pray it from that knowing and pray that I am the serenity of God. I am the peace of God. I am the courage of God. I am the wisdom of God. We are already those things. When we talk about being a child of God, do we really understand what that means? Well, obviously it doesn't, or we would all, more of us would be living as a child of God, living from that knowing of yourself as a spiritual being, fully and perfectly equipped to meet whatever change life brings us. And so as you think of yourself as a child of God, what does that mean to you? Do you understand that it means that you are one with the Creator? You are one with all others. You are one with all of life, and you are spiritually equipped to meet any challenge that there is, any change that life can throw at you. You know that you are equipped to meet that change. So think of yourself as a child of God and try to understand what that really means. That as a child of God, you are capable. You are one with God and therefore equipped spiritually. So when we go into prayer, we're simply remembering that and 
we are claiming those spiritual attributes. In unity, we call those spiritual attributes the 12 powers, 12 spiritual abilities that we have that we can use in every challenge of life. And of course, one of the greatest is the power of divine love. Divine love is what heals all wounds. Divine love is what heals our relationships. Divine love lets us know our oneness with one another. Love is the greatest of the spiritual powers in many respects. And then there is the divine ability of divine wisdom and understanding. The enthusiasm for being here as a spiritual being having this human experience that we are called here to be here for this moment of change. To be the change agents. To be the light workers. To be the ones that are holding the truth in the middle of the chaos and craziness. There is that light of God, wisdom of God, understanding of God. There is the strength of God. And it is not so much the physical strength, although it is that, but it is also mental strength and strength of spiritual consciousness, spiritual discipline to keep coming back to the answer to this challenge, not focusing on the challenge, but focusing on the potential that we want to see come into being. We can be the change that we want to see in the world. And we do that through these spiritual abilities that we have. And so one of the ways that I like to do this for myself is to, so that I can become more aware of myself as a child of God, is to start every day claiming my spiritual identity. Start every day by saying, I am so grateful for this day, this day that gives me another day to express my spiritual essence, to be the love that is needed to be the wisdom, to be the power of God, the strength of God in expression, no matter what the monkeys throw at us, no matter what golf balls come flying into our life, we know that we have in us all we need to deal with it. And we access those powers by spending time in prayer and meditation, remembering our truth, aligning with that with which we want. One of the ways that we can do that is to think about ourselves as made in that image and likeness of God with four simple statements. The first one being, God is. Once we recognize that God is fully present, that God is all that is, then we also know that that omnipresence, that everywhere present God, is also all-knowing, but it is also all-powerful. And so as we say, God is, we also can say, I am. I am that child of God. I am the light of God in expression. I am a spiritual being, worthy and valuable and meant to be here. So the first is, God is, I am. And then the next is, God can. God is greater than any challenge that we have in life. God is greater than any circumstance, than any person, than anything in existence. And so, if I am made in the likeness of God, and God can, then I can. I can express wholeness. I can heal from any illness. If God can heal, then I can heal. That healing power of wholeness is present in us, ready to be activated as we face the wholeness that is in every circumstance of apparent illness. If, I, if God can supply all of the provision we need, all of the abundance that we need, then I too can experience a life of abundance as I align with the abundance of God. If God can, I can. If God is that abundance that is unlimited and always available with much more than enough for every need, then I can experience abundance because I am the abundance of God in expression. 
What God can do, we can do in our own way. Remember that Jesus told us in John 14, 12, all the things that I do, you can also do if you believe in me and even greater. And what did he mean? If you believe in my teachings, if you believe the truths that I have taught you, if you believe, as I have told you, that God loves you and wants to give you the kingdom, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So as we understand the Jesus teachings that he was trying to teach us, do you not know you are God's? The kingdom of heaven is within you. You have the ability that I have and even greater as we all evolve spiritually. So God can, therefore I can. Excuse me, let me start from the beginning. God is, therefore I am. God is an infinite spiritual being, beingness itself, and as its likeness, I am also divine life and expression. God is, I am. God can, I can. And so as we hold those thoughts in mind facing these challenges, if we are faced with illness, if we are faced with the transition of a loved one, if we are faced with a job loss, if we are faced with violence, if we are faced with confusion about what in the world is going on, how can any one person handle so much? If God can, I can. God in me can face whatever challenge there is. And so when we go through these changes, sometimes we have to make new rules. Sometimes we have to wear a face mask for a while. Sometimes we have to use a lot of sanitizer for a while. Sometimes we have to find a new job in the midst of shifting economic situations. And often it will be a better job. And remember that in every economic turndown, there is always opportunity for prosperity. As we align with our source, knowing that God is our source, not the economy. So whether it be healing, whether it be prosperity, whether it be peace of mind, whether it be harmony in the family, that we know that we have everything already within us. We are the serenity of God. We are the courage of God. We are the wisdom of God. We are all those attributes that we know about God. And so our one of our famous Unity ministers, Eric Burnworth, said, you are a child of God. Act like it. But in order to act like it, we have to really realize what that means. And we have to accept that truth for ourselves. We have so many years of life, generations and eons, of being told that we are a worm in the dust, that we are not worthy of God's grace. But let me tell you that Jesus brought us a new message. You are worthy, you are valuable, you are important. You are all that you need to be, to be here and to be happy and to make a big difference in this world. You are all you need to be. And so we need to remind ourselves of that. Start every day with that thought that I am a spiritual being. I have all I need to be happy in this experience no matter what is happening in the outer. I can be at peace. I can be healthy. I can have all that my heart desires no matter the circumstances that are going on in the world. So we need to remind ourselves daily, I am made in the likeness of God. I am here to express the likeness of God. God is, I am. God can, I can. So as we hold those thoughts, we remember that no matter what changes come up, we need to let go of what we can't change in the outer because the most important change is the change inside of us. <clears throat> and so let us hold those truths that we learned from the Christ teachings and remember every day who we are to continue to claim and declare our spiritual nature. And so I'd like you to leave you with these affirmations that will help, I hope, as we go through the profound changes that we are facing today. In every circumstance, let us remember, in the midst of fear, I am love. In the midst
midst of illness, I am wholeness. In the midst of lack, I am abundance. And so in that way, as we remind ourselves of who we are and the spiritual attributes that we have and that we are, that we are able to deal with whatever change comes about. We are able to change with whatever golf balls the monkeys throw because we are made in God's image and likeness and we are here to be the peace and the love and the harmony, the abundance and the joy, the compassion and kindness that is so much needed here and now. We are up to it and we can do it. God bless you. Namaste. We now burn our abundance with our offering affirmation song. mailing address. 
address there if you'd like to send in a donation. And again, we thank you for your support. And I'd like to take a moment to bless the offerings that we have received. So if you join me together as we give thanks for all the offerings that we have received, knowing that they are sent in in love and in service to God, we give thanks for this ministry where we are able to share these powerful principles that transform and empower our lives. And we gratefully accept them and dedicate them to the will and the work of the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And we thank everyone who's Natalia and Mindy and Kiera and Marion for your help with the service today. And Marion has a song to close us out. Oh, wow.